Takeaways from Trump's 2019 State of the Union Address The New York Times One night a year, during the State of the Union Address, President Trump sets aside his affinity for combat to offer up 90 minutes of stand-up comedy to a national audience. The agenda I will lay out this evening is not a Republican agenda or a Democrat agenda, Mr. Trump said, opening his speech on a conventionally presidential note on Tuesday. It is the agenda of a couple of hours earlier, that did not stay private long, Mr. Trump called Senator Chuck Schumer, the Democratic leader, nasty, described former Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr. as dumb, ripped into Senator John McCain, and derided Senator Elizabeth Warren as Pocahontas. The speech itself, embedded with patriotic language and delivered in a reassuring tone, veered between two moods you combative and conciliatory, you reflecting a president at a crossroads ahead of an uncertain 2019. Here are four takeaways. For more than a month, Mr. Trump has threatened to invoke a state of emergency along the southern border with Mexico, in an attempt to circumvent Congress which has refused to give him $5.7 billion for a border wall. But it was not until this week that Senate Republicans you many of whom vehemently oppose the idea on the grounds that it tramples legislative prerogative you made it clear that diverting funding from other projects for a wall, in the name of a national emergency, was a non-starter. For the moment, Mr. Trump heeded their wishes. The emergency deck, it was, to a significant degree, an act of political self-protection. At the weekly Republican Senate lunch held in the Capitol a few hours before Mr. Trump's speech, Senator John Thune of South Dakota, the majority whip, was asked about the likelihood of the president invoking emergency powers. Mr. Thune rep Mr. Trump would do the right thing, he predicted, because all you have to do is count to four, Mr. Thune quipped, according to a person in attendance. Mr. Trump began the night by optimistically playing up a new opportunity in American politics, if only we have the courage to seize it. And he expressed support for a variety of popular initiatives that enjoy widespread popularity among Democrats, including new funding to eradicate AIDS, a campaign to reduce childhood cancers and yet another commitment to try to fix the country's crumbling infrastructure. Then, about 15 minutes into the address, Mr. Trump hit on an issue foremost in his consciousness, you the looming threat of congressional investigations into his conduct. First, he offered what amounted to a plea for the new Democratic majority in the House to avoid ridiculous partisan investigations and cautioned his enemies not to seek revenge against him. Then came the bluntest of threats to the woman sitting behind him, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, if there is going to be peace and legislation, there cannot be war and investigation. It just doesn't work. We must be united at home to defeat our adversaries abroad, he said. Already facing a divided Congress, Mr. Trump has been rebuked by members of his own party in recent days over his decision to pull troops from Syria and his demands for a border wall. In response, he invoked two issues that have been used to rally divided conservatives for decades you the fights against abortion and socialism. There could be no greater contrast to the beautiful image of a mother holding her infant child than the chilling displays our nation saw in recent days, he said, referring to efforts by Democrats in New York and Virginia to loosen restrictions on abortion rights. In recent days, Republicans on Capitol Hill have been circulating talking points urging them to highlight plans by Democrats, including the freshman representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York, to increase taxes on the wealthy. Here, in the United States, we are alarmed by new calls to adopt socialism in our country, Mr. Trump said. America was found, Mr. Trump dedicated several minutes to listing his economic accomplishments on behalf of women as he faced row upon row of seats occupied by Democratic women wearing white, in a visual demonstration of their unprecedented power in a house run by one of their own. No one has benefited more from our thriving economy than women, who have filled 58% of the newly created jobs last year, said Mr. Trump who seemed genuinely surprised by the thunderous applause it evoked from women on both sides of the aisle.
You weren't supposed to do that, said the president, who went on to praise. That, too, garnered a hearty ovation. He has a long wait that large majorities of women disapprove of his performance. With ten days left for Congress to pass a border security package and avert another government shutdown, Mr. Trump devoted a significant portion of his speech to making the case for his signature campaign proposal a wall at the southern border. This is a smart, strategic, see-through steel barrier you not just a simple concrete wall, he said, adding, simply put, walls work and walls save lives. But as Mr. Trump raised the time frame to keep the government fully funded, the Democrats tensed and Republicans continued to applaud. Rep. Ilhan Omar, Democrat of Minnesota, buried her head in her hands. As he detailed a Trump wants a Harry Swatson, Rep. Veronica Escobar, Democrat of Texas, whose district includes most of El Paso, was visibly angry after Mr. Trump referenced her district and the decrease in crime. She appeared to mouth, oh my god, oh my god, she mouthed to her colleagues, her arms crossed as other representatives looked over in her direction. There were also some unhappy murmurs when he described the increase in troops at the southern border and scoffs at his description of the savage MS-13 gang. The audience for Mr. Trump's State of the Union address looked like a striking sea of white, with Democratic women you many dressed in white in a nod to the women's suffragist movement you sitting together. Midway through the press, no one has benefited more from our thriving economy than women, who have filled 58% of the newly created jobs last year, Mr. Trump said, prompting the women to roar their approval. After all, you weren't supposed to do that, the president said, smiling. All Americans can be proud that we have more women in the workforce than ever before, Mr. Trump went on, adding, don't sit yet. You're going to like, and then he delivered his biggest applause line exactly one century after Congress passed the constitutional amendment giving women the right to vote, we also have more women serving in Congress than at any time before. It was a striking moment for a president who has been routinely accused of misogyny, who paid hush money to a pornographic film actress and a playboy model and who spoke in vulgar terms as he admitted on videotape that he had sexually assaulted women. The former minority leader of the Georgia legislature, narrowly lost her bid to be the first African-American female governor in the South, but it was the way she lost you amid charges of voter suppression and vote rigging you that really rankled. In choosing Ms. Abrams to give the Democratic response, her party's leaders were tapping a crusader for voting rights, and that is what she delivered. While I acknowledged the results of the 2018 election here in Georgia, I did not and we cannot accept efforts to undermine our right to vote, Ms. Abrams said. This is the next ba- She also tackled race, even as a Democratic governor, of Virginia, fights for his political survival after photos of a man in black face and another in a Ku Klux Klan robe emerged in his medical school yearbook. We fought Jim Crow with the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, yet we continue to confront racism from our past and in our present, she said, which is why we must hold everyone from the very highest offices to our own families accountable for racist words and deeds you and call racism what it is wrong. Mr. Trump plans to sit down with, this month in Vietnam, a country chosen as a neutral location for their second nuclear summit meeting, but one that also has plenty of symbolic significance. Mr. Trump hopes the meeting will jumpstart a diplomatic effort that has stalled since there. While North Korea, much work remains to be done, but my relationship with Kim Jong-un is a good one, Mr. Trump said. Chairman Kim, and after spending the first portion of his speech patting himself on the back for what he views as his administration's accomplishments, including low unemployment, Mr. Trump issued a stern warning to the Democrats now in charge of the House. An economic miracle is taking place in the United States, you and the only thing that can stop it are foolish wars, politics, or ridiculous partisan investigations, he said. If there is going to be, Speaker Nancy Pelosi smirked behind him. Rep. Adam Schiff of California, Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, smiled.
he has already begun. This year's State of the Union address was the second longest in recorded history, according to the at the University of California, Santa Barbara. The project stated, President Trump delivered a message of bipartisan unity on Tuesday night in his first address to Congress in the new era of divided government, but any hope of enduring harmony was dispelled long before he arrived at the Capitol. Mr. Trump, who has warred with Democrats for weeks over his plan to build a wall along the nation's southwestern border, hoped to use the nationally televised speech to present himself as a leader who can work across party lines even as he continued to press lawmakers to give him money for the barrier. Together, we...